lookups. We're going to talk about lookups again. This time we are going to talk about KV lookups. My last video I talked about CSV lookups. Now we're going to be looking up key value lookups. These lookups are different, whereas CSV lookups are stored in your lookup directory on the command line. KV stores are actually stored in a MongoDB database that uh, Splunk controls, and so they are slightly different. But because it's in a database, it provides CRUD capabilities, copy, read, write, um, uh, revision control, things like that. And what makes KVs the, what they are is they actually create a unique key, and thereby you can update the fields through code. Um, and But the big reason to use KVs versus CSVs. CSVs are great if the data is going to uh, be relatively static or it's not a large data set, but as you start getting thousands of entries, it's a lot faster to use KV stores. Um, CSVs uh, require replication from the search head to the indexer. KV stores are a lot cleaner. Um, they're Anyway, so as a general rule, if you're going to be doing a lot of writing, changing, the data is going to be changing frequently, uh, we recommend using KV stores. Uh, as you get used to it, you can start with CSVs, but you'll start to find the place where KVs fit. Um, you'll see it definitely in performance. Usually, like when I talk about KV CSVs, I'll tell you go to settings, lookups, and add them in. You can still do that, but I kind of like the visual perspective you get. There is an app called Lookup Editor. You can get it from Splunk Base. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link down below if you don't have it. Um, put this on all your search heads. It makes things so much better if you can. Anyway, Lookup Editor, when you come into it, it just makes this whole KV process really simple. I can create a new lookup. I'm going to create a KV store lookup, and I'm going to call it KV lame. Uh, the CSVs usually end with a dot CSV. The lames they do the uh, KV stores do not. That's one of the reasons when I in my other video I said make sure to put dot CSV on there. If you don't, it's going to think it's a KV. And a CSV that's acting like a KV doesn't work well. And a KV that's working, acting like a CSV doesn't work well. So just make sure you name them right. So in this case, I'm going to keep it as KV. I'm going to choose what app I want to put it in. And I'm going to say lame edu. And I'm going to go grab the fields. The first field I'm going to say is a source IP. And it has the ability to uh, provide casting of string, number, boolean, time, cider. I'm going to have mine as a string, and I'm going to put description. Let's see. Let's look at my KV, the CSV I'm going to do. Let's make it as a type. So I'm going to do type, and I don't need these other fields, so I'm just going to remove them. I can add another one if I want to. I'm going to create lookup, and that's the first part, and then it's going to tell you, so there's my save. I can import. I'm going to go ahead and oh, import. I'm going to select my file. There is my Splunk. Cre select my file, lame server. It just imported there. Notice that's where the key comes from. It. I did not create the underscore key field. It did. Here's my source IPs, my types from my lookup. And if I hit If I hit open and search, it's going to tell me one more time, hey, what's the name of this thing? You, so it actually modifies, a KV store resides in two different config files on the operating system, in the props and in the transforms, uh, um, the collections and the transforms. This KV lane that I named, that made the entry into the collections config file. Now I need the transform. I highly recommend you make them the exact same. Otherwise, you'll be calling it different names as you go, as you want to recall it. And so I recommend using the exact same name you used here. I hit this Create Transform. I hit Open and Search. And I get my values back. And I call it the exact same way. This is a pen. You can put it on there. Don't. I'll talk about that later. But the CSV we had to call the .csv on there. A KV store, you just call the name. You do not need the, the entry. The same way you search, if I go source IP equals 
this does not work, but if I do search source IP equals 10.0.0.1, and I take this out here, you need to use a search or a where clause. I use search usually, but here's my search. And if I do that, I get back the one value. And that is how you use an input lookup. You, you put it in using lookup editor. You're going to create the name the very first time. And then when you save it, it will add. You'll want to put a transform in there and give it another name. I can go in here. I can add another value, insert a new row after. And I'm going to put this as 8.8.8.8. And I'm going to call it a DNS. Hit that, and I should have down at the bottom, we'll have our values. So if we got this working right, so we should be good. I can export this, whatever the case may be, etc. I can hit refresh. It'll bring in the latest values, and and I can modify it as, as such. That's the basic behind a KV. It, they're not really much more difficult to do. Um, I'm going to show a little trick here. If I have a CSV file, so I have an input lookup, and you want you already have you need to make sure you've set up the KV structure, the string names and things like that. But if you got that working, I can go lame CSV demo dot CSV output lookup and what do we call this lame kb lame and that should work what this will do is it'll go grab the input lookup lame csv and it will pipe to this cool command called output lookup kv lame and if i do this it'll take all the contents here and write it here if i want to maintain the fields that already exist I can do append equals true. And if I do append equals true, that means it will write these onto the bottom, the next rows in the KV. By default, append equals false. And so that is what you need to be aware of. Anyway, so that's it for this uh, example on KV stores. I, I know I jumped and covered a lot of topics. I hope you'll pay attention, you'll, uh, you found it useful. If it was, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We're gonna, we still have more videos on lookup and how to use them in your code. I hope this helps you as you move from being a lame analyst to being a Splunk Ninja.